Hey guys, it's Maximus Gain. I know this wasn't the video that you were expecting today. You were probably expecting UPW prime time, but that'll come tomorrow. I wanted to do something different, something special today. If you like what you see, definitely do me a favor, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notifications button, so you know whenever I put up new content. And if anybody has any questions, by the time I'm done with this, feel free to leave them in the comment section and I'll answer them the best way I can. So why do I have this up? Mental illness. You see, reality check. Not a hoax, right? The hoax with the little no smoking sign kind of thing around it. Well, there's a reason. Because people have this stigma. They think that mental illness is a few things. It's not real. They don't educate themselves on what it is. And they think you're weak. They think you're violent. You, they think you're crazy. I'll get to that later. But I want to give you something real quick. In the United States, almost half of all adults, that's 46.4%, is going to experience mental illness during their lifetime. 5% of adults are 18 and over, experience mental illness in any one year, equivalent to 43.8 million people. It's one in five Americans suffer from some sort of mental illness and some can recover completely. Some learn to, to live, to manage, to live with what... I'm not gonna start this over because I, I need you to hear the way I am. Some people do manage to recover completely. Some learn to manage this and live with it and some live with it with great success and some don't and then some never recover anxiety disorders believe it or not are the most common mental illness in the United States affecting 40 million adults in the United States age 18 and over that's 18.1 percent of the population every year Mental illness issues include depression and anxiety, and it, it's so much more. And people don't educate themselves. And you know what? They look on the outside and they think everybody is fine. They see you and they think, oh, that guy looks normal, right? But what is normal? What does normal look like? Did you know that all that that I just said about all those millions of people experience mental illness every year, that that's gone up since COVID started? Nearly half of adults, 45% of adults in the United States reported that their mental health has negatively impacted themselves due to the worry and stress over the virus. And that's people who are normal, whatever the fuck normal is, I'm not gonna, I'm not holding back. Whatever normal is, and Think about the first responders. Think about the doctors. Think about the nurses. Can you imagine when a doctor and a nurse and just physicians overall, and you've seen this in television shows, you probably experienced it in real life where a doctor has come up to you and told you that they did everything they could, but they couldn't save that person. You know, that weighs heavily on a doctor. That's not something that they get used to. It's not something they teach in medical school you know how to talk to the people that 
are related to the people you just lost. Imagine how that weighs on one doctor for one patient. 212,000 Americans have died and that number is not inflated. I'm sorry, that is not inflated. Whatever you believe is a hoax. You believe that number is a hoax? Guess what, it's not a hoax either. Think about it. Those first responders having to watch those people come in, trying to do everything they can to save those people and they lose them. And it's not just one, it's not just two or three or four. They see death multiple times every day. How does that weigh on them? If you've ever lost anybody in your life, you know what depression feels like. I lost my mother in 2005. I didn't get to mourn for her until years and years later. But by that time, I was already a single father. I didn't have time to mourn in the way where I was depressed and I couldn't do anything. And I'll touch on that in a little bit because it did factor into something. Imagine losing someone. That hurts, right? You feel depression. Well, the doctors who do everything they possibly can, give all the medication they have at their disposal to try and save that person. My mother was killed by cancer. They did everything they possibly could to save her and they couldn't. And if that weighs heavily on one patient, imagine how seeing hundreds of people die in a day thousands we're up to a thousand again we're up to a just over a thousand people a day dying from covid imagine those doctors and nurses feeling that dozens of people dying right in front of them how their mental health can't be affected by that now i'm going to show you some stuff no more statistics, okay? There'll be one last statistic that'll be at the end. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna ask a couple questions. And you guys, you know, I know that this isn't live, it's taped uh, or recorded, whatever the hell you wanna call it, but you can, you can answer stuff inside the comment section if you'd like. Which one of those three do you think has some sort of mental illness. Now, the most obvious one is the one all the way on the right, Chrissy Teigen, because in 2016 she lost, she had a miscarriage, she lost her child. So she suffered from postpartum depression. And most recently they just lost another child, her and John Legend. So. We'll take her out of the equation. So out of those two, Sophie Turner on the left, who's from Game of Thrones, and of course Chris Evans, Captain America. Which one do you think suffers from mental illness? And there's a reason why I'm showing celebrities and I'm gonna explain why. Because people look at celebrities and some celebrities do speak out about what's wrong with them whether they've suffered from, you know, anything from depression to anorexia to anxiety to depression. I think I said depression already. But let's go through some. Some that you may know about and some that you may not. So, you know, right now, does Sophie Turner suffer from anything? Does Chris Evans? I mean, Chris Evans is Captain America. Right? He's always got a smile on his face. Always. But let's go through some stuff. Let's start here. If you don't know who that is, that's B.B. Rexa. Okay? B.B. Rexa is a singer. 
she's one of the most beautiful women in the world and she should have no problem whatsoever right nothing BB Rexa suffers from bipolar disorder and she said in an interview with Envision um, Associated Press for the longest time I didn't understand why I felt so sick she tweeted in April of 2019 why I felt lows and that made me not want to leave my house or be around people and why I felt highs that wouldn't let me sleep wouldn't let me stop working or creating music now I know why in 2020 cover story of self magazine the singer who has bipolar one opened up about her dis decision to speak publicly about her mental health struggles that was my worst fear all my life going crazy she said I felt like me opening up to my fans was me finally saying I'm not going to be imprisoned by this and maybe it'll make me feel not feel imprisoned in the moment if they feel like they're going through a rough time nowadays Rexa says that medication has helped her cope. It doesn't take away the sadness or anxiety totally, but I feel so much better, she told self. It helped me live a more balanced life, less ups and downs. When my medication started kicking in, I couldn't believe how I felt. I felt I couldn't believe that's how good people could feel. People have a stigma about or misinformation about medication and I'll tell you about that in a second. So this beautiful woman who, I mean, should have no insecurities, no fears, no, no downs whatsoever. She should have nothing but highs because, I mean, she's an award-winning singer. Her new song just went number one. She shouldn't have anything wrong with her, right? And when we see her, we see her doing pictures like this. Majestic, beautiful pictures. Or smiling. Well, now she can smile. But remember, the medication only helps a little bit. You still get those ups and downs. So there are still times where you don't feel like doing anything. So there are days, I can tell you right now, where BB probably didn't want to do anything. Probably wanted to stay home. Probably wanted to stay under the covers or be left alone. But she does what she does. She goes home and she lives a semi-normal life and I say semi-normal because I don't know what normal is supposed to be because what the hell is normal these days but that is one confident looking woman I mean we see her but if you guys go back and remember that video where she did on Instagram where those people didn't want to make her outfit for her because they said she was too big I mean the woman is is not too big she's perfect in my opinion she went off in that video and I can tell you right now her going off in that video was part of not just anger but part of that bipolarism and I'll explain why and how I know that in a minute let's get to the next person and see Oh look, it's Chris Evans. It's Captain America. Captain America. Probably the most known actor right now. 
because of all the fant the the Marvel movies, his own Captain America movies, the Avengers movies. In an interview with Rolling Stone in 2016, the actor revealed how his anxiety often kicks in during premieres. So when he premieres a new movie and he's walking down the red carpet, this is what he says. During premieres, equating red carpet events to 30 minutes of walking on hot coals. He's tried everything from meditating to reading Buddhist texts to calm his mind. He's gotten better, but still has moments of self-doubt when he overanalyzes things. I mean, come on. We've seen Chris Evans, right? We've seen him in all the Captain America movies, the Avengers movies. Does this man look like he should have self-doubt? He's a good looking guy. He works out so like every woman in the world right now has a crush on him. The anxiety he suffers, he calls it a noisy brain. Why should he feel self doubt? He plays a superhero that is admired by people all over the world and not just by superhero fans but by Chris Evans fans like not just Captain America fans not by just fans of Marvel Comics just fans in general he's a great actor why should he feel self doubt let's go to another that right there that's Grant Gustin. He plays the Flash on CW. Another superhero. Before that, he was on Glee. He suffered, he's suffered. he been suffering from anxiety and depression since he was four or five years old. In a 2020 interview with Michael Rosenbaum for his podcast titled Inside of You, Gustin said that he used to have weird, anxious type dreams as a child. Anxiety is ever present in my life for sure, he said, explaining that he gets nervous before events like Comic-Con and he can't eat. It's one of those reasons I'm so thin. Anxiety rules my stomach. The actor admitted that he's always been really hard on himself and that he still is he puts way too much pressure on himself early on and it gets in his way a lot and I think it shows he says in my opinion at least in the work like how wound up I am how focused I was on getting it right plays another superhero he's married women like him too they think he's attractive he's a great guy you follow him on social media him and Chris Evans all these people that I'm showing you they are and the people that I'm going to show you some of them you're going to be surprised about trust me there's one that's really going to blow your mind actually probably two And anxiety wants to trap you so bad. These guys go out and they do what they do and then they go home. And if you've ever experienced anxiety, like for a job interview or if you're a girl and you're waiting for a guy to call you back or you're a guy waiting for a girl to call you back, trust me, the anxiety that you're feeling is nothing compared to what people who suffer from anxiety and depression feel every day. To give you some sort of an idea, take the anxiety you've ever felt, the highest you've ever felt, whether it was for a job interview, whether it was for waiting for anything, anything at all. Take that 
and multiply it and continue to multiply it and multiply it and multiply it and multiply it and I'll tell you right now you won't even come close to the way people like this are but let's keep going that's Kendrick Lamar now Kendrick Lamar speaks about this in his music but there's another one also that does Kendrick Lamar at the 2017 MTV Video Music Awards that year the Grammy Awards winning the Grammy Award winning artist revealed his struggles with depression and suicidal thoughts in his album to pimp a butterfly on the emotional track you for example Kendrick raps about the survivor's guilt he feels for leaving his hometown of Compton California where many of his friends and family still remain three of my homeboys one summer was murdered Kendrick told MTV in an interview about his album he continued you live in your you live in this life you know what I'm saying but you still have to face realities of this I got I gotta get back off that tour bus and go to these funerals can you imagine that here's another one Oh, let me go here. That's Kid Cudi. Another rapper. He decided to talk about his struggle with mental illness on Facebook. In a heartfelt message to his fans, the rapper revealed that he had checked himself into rehab for depression and suicidal urges. I'm tired of being held back in my life, the rapper wrote. I deserve to have peace. I deserve to be happy and smiling. Kid Cudi's honest post was met with widespread support. It also spawned a hashtag on Twitter. Hashtag you good man. For black men to open up about their experiences with mental illness. And for people to discuss the intersection of race, masculinity, and mental health and I'm gonna talk about that too because there's a stigma about going somewhere now I'm gonna skip to one person and then I'm gonna come back to the two that are probably gonna really hit you that's Sophie Turner she's from Game of Thrones she also played Phoenix in the X-Men movie She's been outspoken about going through her eating disorder, depression, anxiety. She says, I was too aware of my body at a young age. And it just kind of took over my mind. It was all I would think about. Calorie counting, everything. Oh, I'll just eat nuts today. The actress went on to say that she decided to have therapy when she stopped getting her period. Turner also spoke about the impact of therapy and her husband Joe Jonas during a podcast with Dr. Phil. I feel much better, she said. I've been going to therapy at CAST centers. Actually, I'm on medication and I love myself now or more than I used to, I think. I don't think I love myself at all, but I am now with someone that makes me realize that I do have some redeeming qualities I suppose and when someone tells you they love you every day it makes you really think about why that is and I think it makes you love yourself a bit more look at this woman she's absolutely magnificently gorgeous as a matter of fact one of my wrestling created characters is has her face on it if you ever watch any of my videos next time you see prime time and you see rachel young that's her face 
if you go to my Twitter and you go through it, uh, there's a, and I'll put it up again, there's a picture of Sophie Turner and Rachel Young right next to each other and they look exactly alike because it is her face I'm using. Now how about I go to the ones that will really shock you. I mean really, really shock you. Now I don't know which one is more shocking. If it's the one I'm going to show you now or if it's the one that I should show you first. But I'm going to go with this one first. That's The Rock. If you do know wrestling or you know movies, you know this is Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Did you know after suffering injuries in college in his freshman year that he just experienced first of three depressions? He said, I didn't know what it was. He revealed it in an interview with The Hollywood Reporter in 2014. I didn't know why I didn't want to do anything. I had never experienced anything like that. He later said, I found that with depression, one of the most important things you could realize is that you're not alone. On an episode of Oprah's Masterclass in 2015 is when he said that you're not the first to go through it. You're not going to be the last to go through it. I wish I had someone at that time who could just pull me aside and say, hey, it's going to be okay. It'll be okay. I mean, come on, this is The Rock, right? This is The Rock. How? The man is successful. He was the most paid actor last year out of everyone successful in wrestling successful in film loved by millions and millions of fans comes from a family that is nothing but a bunch of from what you see, a bunch of confident, confident human beings who you would never expect could have something like this. Now, it seems like he's been able to recover because he's got a lot of things, but, and I'm glad he recovered, but like I said, some people recover all the way, some don't. Grant Gustin and Chris Evans, they learned to live with it. Kendrick Lamar and Cuddy, they're trying to learn to live with it, but they're not fully recovered. Sophie Turner seems like she's on her way. Now, whether you like all these people or not, one thing that they do deserve, in my opinion, is happiness and peace. Because this is something that they should have going through something like this. Here's the last one of the celebrities I'm going to show you. And if this doesn't shock you, because I know The Rock should have shocked you, but if this doesn't shock you, I don't know what will. I really don't. That right there is Ryan Reynolds. And if you don't know who he is, I don't know where you've been. That's not just Ryan Reynolds. Look at him. Look, he's standing right in front of a poster where he plays Deadpool. He's been making movies like Van Wilder. He made he was in the movie Waiting, which is on net on Netflix right now, which is still one of my best movies I love that movie he's in it and then Deadpool movies
Now, I said earlier that anxiety disorders are the most common mental illness in the United States, affecting 40 million people. He's one of those. The man is Deadpool. You see him on a screen. He uses this sarcasm. He uses his sarcasm. He uses his sarcastic humor to get through everything. To be who he is. And it is him. See, with him being able to be himself by using that sarcastic humor, it lets the real him come out. Now, he's married to Blake Lively. She's an actress as well. And she's a beautiful woman. But, you know, and these two, these two go back and forth playing jokes on each other. If you follow them, I follow Ryan Reynolds on Instagram. I follow um, Blake Lively also. And, you know, some people say, you know, when you find that right person, you marry that person, you marry your best friend. And some people go, well, that's not true. And guess what? It is for some people. Deadpool. And you know what? Ryan Reynolds, Deadpool, he credits his wife, Blake Lively, for helping him cope with his anxiety. He said, not only did Lively convinced Reynolds to take his dream role in Deadpool. She also kept him grounded while filming the movie. In an interview with Variety, the actor revealed how his anxiety over disappointing fans led him to stay up late with the script, lose sleep. His wife helped him through that. And he said... I'm lucky to have her around. Now, what do these guys all have in common? All of them, the men and the females here. What do they all have in common? Every single one of them. Every single one decided to speak out. Because they thought it would help. They really thought it would help. Other people. I don't know if this video is going to help. But I'm not done just yet. I know you're probably saying, damn it, he's not finished yet. But... You know, growing up, I've always been a fan of Batman. There was something about Batman, and I know he's a fictional character, but there's something, there was always something about him. It wasn't that he was just a normal man that could take out anybody, but that he turned the tragedy that was the death of his parents and turned into Batman. Now, I'm not saying that people with you know, tragedies that happen in our lives like others, you know, who suffer from anxiety, depression, PTSD, OCD. Um, Lady Gaga has P uh, PTSD. Maya Bialik, who was on The Big Bang Theory, suffers from OCD. And she said the OCD is so bad that it makes her it makes it hard for her to do anything. But that's the life that we didn't choose, but it's the life that we have. We didn't choose to do this because no one would choose to live a life like this. I can tell you that right now. No one wants to live a life like this.
Batman was always my superhero. My fictional superhero. Who could overcome anything. But I showed you all those people. Superheroes. These people who were larger than life. These actors. These famous people who seem like they should not have any problems whatsoever. And they deal with it every day. Let me show you one more picture. This is me. I fall into those categories like they do. See, I know what depression feels like. I feel it every day. I know what anxiety feels like because I deal with it every day. And let me tell you, anxiety can be debilitating. Anxiety can be the root that causes the depression. It can cause you to have these butterflies in your stomach that you want to go away and they don't. Imagine this. Imagine going into an interview or like I said before, going into your, you know, your first date or to meet your girlfriend's or boyfriend's parents, for example. And you feel that anxiety and I said to take that anxiety and multiply it and multiply it and multiply it. How about this? Take that. Don't multiply it. But imagine having that be the first thing that you feel in the morning when you wake up. Something that you feel all day long. It's the last thing you feel when you go to sleep. And the son of a bitch wakes you up in the middle of the night. Because it does. One of the things that bothers me is people look at these actors. They look at everybody. I mean... You know, I'm sarcastic in my videos. I always have been. I've always been sarcastic. But... I never knew why in all my years why I would change a job every two years until my last job. My last job I was there for four and a half years and then the first Friday of 2013 is when everything came to a head. What do I mean by that? Well, let me uh, move this a little. In 2013, the first Friday of the new year, I was at work and something happened at work. It wasn't anything major, um, but and I had always been this guy. I mean, I grew up in the ghetto, for real ghetto. I know I don't look like it because I shave my head and there's a reason why I do that. And, you know, I do that because I promised my mother I would shave my head if I got custody of my children in 2015 when there's a lot of shit going down. I won custody, so I started shaving. I have a full head of hair. I just shaved it today. People don't look at me and see that I'm Hispanic. They look at me and a lot of people think that I look Caucasian. I mean, shit, I look at the camera and I, I think I look Caucasian. Well, let me tell you something that's funny. I looked Caucasian when I was younger before I started 
getting dark and getting my fade and all that when I was younger. If you guys don't know what a fade is, you're going to have to look it up. And, you know, the cops would treat me different because my friends were darker than I was. But you know what? The minute they read my last name, I got treated just same way. Like a piece of shit. Just because of what I am. I remember the first time I felt anxiety. I was six. Maybe five. My mother would work a three to eleven shift. A three to midnight shift. My mother had problems in her back. She had, you know... She had multiple surgeries for herniated discs in her back. Now I got three in my back, and I don't, I don't feel them. Because I, you know, I worked out for years, and uh, in 2015 I lost 168 pounds in one summer, and of course then the following year, I don't know how, but I hurt a hip, and then the following year after I had an anxiety attack. Now wait, let me, let me fix that. There's a difference between an anxiety attack and a panic attack. An anxiety attack is what I'm having right now because I'm speaking really fast to you. A panic attack is what happens when you go absolutely bonkers and the next thing you know, for me at least, I'm passed out on the floor or wherever the hell I am, but you're not sleeping. And here's the scary part. You're not asleep. And you can still hear everything around you. But... There's nothing you can do. You can't get up. You can't wake up. You can't do jack shit. Imagine living by yourself like that. But I had a panic attack and I fell and I sprained my left knee. So for two years, I couldn't walk or run the way I wanted to, right? So since I couldn't walk or run the way I wanted to, I had to take it easy. And you know, at that time, my my treadmill was broken, so I wasn't able to work out at home. Because for me, it was taking my my walks and my jogs, but I couldn't do it outside because the concrete was too much for my hip and my knee. I mean, imagine having both of those hurting you at the same time. And for fuck's sake, I'm only 46 years old right now. And this was a couple years ago. So I couldn't work out. But 2019, you know, is 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 come, you know, 2019 was coming around. Spring was was going to be popping up for 2020. My older son had put me through a whole bunch of shit. And he's no longer here. He went and lived with his mother. But he put me through a lot of shit. And the stuff that I've been through in my lifetime. You know. PTSD. From when I was a kid. I'm not going to tell you what it is. You can figure it out. So. PTSD. OCD. No bullshit, I wash my hands exactly 26 times a day. Exactly, and it has to be. And you know what? I don't like having numbers outside of fives. So when I count something, I try as hard as possible to make sure that when I count something, I can end in a five for like five or 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. But no. No, like 25 would be fine if I wash my hands 25 times a day. No, my motherfucking ass got to do it at 26, so I <laughs> fucked that up, but I can't help it. Do you know that I wash my hands after I get out the shower? I just, I just got out the shower. I'm fucking clean, yo. And I wash my hands before I leave the bathroom. Can you believe that shit? Next thing you know, putting my clothes in the hamper. Next thing you know, I'm back in the bathroom and I'm washing my hands again. I'm either washing my hands in the bathroom 
or in the kit in the kitchen sink. When I do these videos, I try and do them before I take a shower because I, I sweat my ass off. Because I'm telling you right now, man, I don't give a fuck what anybody says. And I know there's people out there talking about, you know, whether the Xbox Series X or the PlayStation is going to be hot or one rip runs cool or whatever it is. If you own a PC, a strong ass PC, you sit next to the bitch, your ass is going to sweat. I'm sitting next to mine and mine is a goddamn beast. And I just bought the motherfucker and I'm dying right now. I got a fan right there. I got an air conditioner right there. But if I turn the air conditioner on, it's going to be like I turn a PS4 on or five of them and got a fucking jet engine coming through. But I suffer from everything. And you know what? You won't see me on camera a lot. I mean, I'm I'm uncomfortable right now. That's why I'm trying not to look at the camera. So there will be times where I look at the camera and then I'm I'm actually looking at just my face on the screen or looking away because I don't like what I see. I never have. I've never liked what I see. Even when I was at my best. Even when I was in the best shape of my life 20 years ago and in the second best shape of my life a few years ago and I didn't have a problem with anything, you know, I'm single right now because I choose to be. 20 years ago, I didn't choose to be single and I had... You know, I had, I'm not going to sit here and say, yeah, I was, I was a pimp because, you know, and I was a shit. I wasn't, but I had women chasing me. I had women talking to me and chasing me a few years ago. But you don't understand how it eats at you. So let me tell you what I have. I have anxiety, which is the root of all evil in my, li in my life. I have depression. I have OCD, PTSD. Last time I checked, I have borderline personality disorder, which is bipolar, which I hate that word because people have People try and connect the dots with being bipolar to being violent. Let me tell you, you know, the vast majority of people with mental illness or have some sort of mental problem, they're, more, they're no more likely to be as violent than anyone else. As a matter of fact, most people with mental illness seem to be individuals living with mental illness seem to be the recipients of violence against them. And it's not just that, you know, people with mental illness have a 10 times, it's 10 times worse because people with mental illness are over 10 times more likely to be victims of violent crime than the general population. I don't care what happens to me. I never have. I never thought that I could care about anything other than my mom and my dad. When I had my kids, I still didn't care what happened to me, but I, I had to protect my children no matter what. And if that meant that I had to stick around, I had to stick around. But you know what? Before I was married, I tried to kill myself. In 2008, I tried it again. I'm not going to tell you what year I tried the third time, but I lost 
and I made I failed at it again and that's the best time I mean that's the proudest time that you can feel about failing something is when you fail to kill yourself because you're a coward and I'm gonna I'm gonna break down real quick a stigma especially for guys cuz this this is more on guys guys believe that if they go in and look for help because they're having some sort of mental you know issue or whatever it may be that it shows a sign of weakness it doesn't it actually does the opposite you're not weak when you go and seek help you're weak when you don't when you go and seek help you're strong and you know what you've been strong this whole time because you've been dealing with what you've been dealing with but it's been so hard it's been weighing down on you on your back it's been weighing down on your heart it's been weighing down on your on your head and in your brain and you don't know how to do anything and then you go and you find help now see I never gave a shit about what anybody thought about me I do get mad when people look at me and say you know what he looks fine he don't look sick at all but you don't understand I might look fine on the outside but there's something inside me that struggles between each other this your brain is fighting itself it's just moving back and forth and when I first heard this you know when I first had my nervous breakdown and it was January the first Friday in January of 2013 I started crying at work. Work was over. I went home. I had just bought a car. Went home. Cooked dinner for my kids. Used my whole weekend like I usually did. Got up Monday morning. Got dressed. Got ready for work. Got in my car and drove to work. Parked my car. And no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't open the door. So for my car, I called my boss and I said, you know, I'm not feeling well. I'm at, I, I can't come into work today. Now, luckily, I had time off, so it wasn't going to hurt. Now, I should have been able to just turn the car around and get the fuck out of there, but I, I couldn't. So for the next 42 minutes, and yes, I do know, and if you want me to break it down to the exact time, for the next 42 minutes... 42 minutes, 33 seconds. I sat there frozen. Then I was able to turn on the car and drive home. And I only lived two miles away from my, ja from my job when, where I lived before. 43 minutes. And it was the middle of the goddamn winter. It was cold as hell. And I had the car off. And here in Buffalo at that time, man, I remember that day. It was hot. I mean, it was cold. It was cold as hell. It was cold outside. There was snow on the ground. Ice started just forming on the window. And I had a doctor and I had a counselor at that time. And you know what? I never heard so much bullshit in my life. My doctor said, maybe you need some time off. Because I had been dealing with so much shit. You know, I started raising my kids by myself in 2005. The same year that I got divorced. The same year I lost my mother. And I'd been doing that nonstop until 2013. So they were like, maybe you just need some time off. So we're going to give you a couple weeks off. I was already taking some sort of anxiety medication. I can't even remember what the hell it was. 
So for two weeks, I tried to go back and didn't work. So you tried another two weeks, didn't work. I tried to go back in January 2013, February 2013, March, April, May, June. I tried it for seven months. I mean six months, I'm sorry, to get back to work. And it didn't work. I had a full blown panic panic attack at work. And I thought I was on my way because, you know, it was an hour and, and a half. You know, it was 90 minutes at work and I was I was okay. I thought. But see, that's the thing about having mental illness. There's a illusion that forms in front of you to make you think that everything's fine. And the next thing you know, you're not. And I had a full blown panic attack and well, When I went home, that panic attack continued and I was laid up. On June 6th, I get a letter in the mail from my job saying that they had fired me because I had threatened somebody's life. Let me explain to you how this worked. This guy who had been giving everybody shit. He's still, I don't know if he's still there. I don't know what the fuck is going on at that job. I don't care. But he had always given everybody shit. He had always given me shit. And you know, my boss was a fucking bitch. You know, she really was. Because she liked to cue people. And back then, you know, I was really heavy. Really heavy. I'm talking over, I was tipping the scales three something. And I was the only other, I was the only Puerto Rican there. I was the only one who spoke Spanish and then they hired somebody else. And I guess according to my boss, who was a female by the way, thought that she was cute and she treated her fine. And you know what? I got treated like shit and to a point where I got pulled into the office for this. She asked for a copy of something and yo, the copy machine's right next to her desk and I just dropped that on her desk. She told my boss I threw it at her. Which I didn't. Because if I did, yo, I'd tell you straight up I threw I would th I would tell you straight up I'd throw it at her. But I didn't. So my boss just gave me shit. She just ripped me to part. And this chick was standing behind her because she was eating lunch in her boss's in our boss's office. Laughing. Quietly. Well, my boss couldn't see her. She turned around. She couldn't see her laughing. There was another time where I said, you know, I bet this, this chick couldn't shut up if her tongue was cut out. So somebody said that to my boss. And the next thing you know, I'm sitting inside an office. Because they said that was a threat. I said, well, I ain't say I was going to cut the bitch's, you know, tongue out. I just said she didn't know how to shut up. Because, and you know what? She wasn't nice to anybody. She wasn't nice to the guys. She wasn't nice to the girls. The only person she was nice to was the boss. She shit on everybody. It didn't matter what gender you were. And because I was born here in the United States, she said that I wasn't a real Puerto Rican because I didn't have, you know, I wasn't born there. Less, it doesn't matter whether I was born there or not. Yo, the blood that runs through my veins is 100% Latino. Ciento por ciento. Ciento por ciento. And you know what runs through the veins of a Puerto Rican? Latino blood. Native American blood. African American blood. 
That's what runs through our veins. It doesn't matter if you were born here or if you were born in Puerto Rico. And it doesn't matter what you look like. I worked with a guy who was redhead with freckles. Came straight off from Puerto Rico. Like if he came right off the boat. Man had an accent like you wouldn't believe, yo. Like you wouldn't believe. Sorry about that. Spoke perfect Spanish, had an accent that was thick as hell. But he had red hair, freckles, white ass skin. He couldn't even go out and tan, yo, because he'd get burned. Everybody thought he was Irish. And he wasn't. He was 100% Latino, 100% Puerto Rican, ciento por ciento. 100%. But going back to when I got fired and they said I threatened this guy's life, let me let me explain how I threatened him. Apparently. I had been telling my bosses for a long time. This guy had been giving me shit. And I got tired of the fact that they didn't do anything about it. And I told them that if you're not going to do anything about it, then I'm going to call the cop and have his ass arrested. Those were my exact words. That's what got me fired. That's what they said I threatened him. And they said I threatened him directly to his face. You know what? We were sitting in an office. I was sitting with human resources, my boss, his boss, human resources, um, the assistant to human resources, so second in command for human resources. And my threat was that I was going to call the cops if they didn't take care of it. That was my threat. He wasn't in the room. Not only was I fired, I was told that I could never be on a premises again. But why the fuck would I want to go on there? You know, I don't pass by there. I have no reason to. But when I did, I couldn't even look at the place. And there were still years before my children could drive. So I still had to drive. I don't go out much. If I did, shit, if I would have been able to go out over the summer if it wasn't for COVID. I'd be dark as fuck right now and I would look more Hispanic than I do because I don't at all at least I, don't, I, I know I don't and I don't give a shit but I do like a nice golden brown like golden brown chicken tan you know what I'm saying And I put up the videos of wrestling or whatever I do because I like to entertain because it's a therapy for me. And when I said earlier that, I, you know, I had doctors and, and counselor back then and I never heard so much bullshit is because my doctor and my counselor said, we're going to do everything and you're going to be right back to the way you were. You're going to be fine. Bullshit. I wasn't. I was getting worse. Then I found a nice counselor at a new place. A doctor that I still have today. Since 2014. Same doctor. Although the doctors have changed over the time, but... It was always the same doctors and now I have the same doctor and this doctor and me, we talk like we are brothers, man. I mean, I owe a lot of what I go through in in good ways to this man. He's more than just a doctor to me. He's my friend and we, he talks to me like I'm his friend too. And, you know, it's just, it's something to have somebody 
who on the first day I met him he didn't bullshit me and the counselor I had at that time didn't bullshit me either not like the two that I had from someplace else see my my doctor that I have now the one that I've had since all these years looked at me and said you may never get back to the way you were before I'm not going to sugarcoat it for you I'm going to let you know the truth you may never be who you were before and that was hard to take and I've never been who I was before the counselor I had at that time said the same thing you know we're going to try and do what we can to help you with this but I'm not going to lie to you you may never be the way you were before I have a counselor now that you know when when I changed over to this counselor and we've been working together for about two and a half years when I first walked into her office she you know I was nervous because I had been with my one counselor for a long time and she is a fan of comics and she got me the second I walked in that damn door as soon as she saw this tattoo with Batman on it right there as soon as she saw that she said I love that tattoo my favorite superhero is the Flash no shit and you know what was funny is that got me and it got me to a point and I know I'm looking down but I, I'm going to show you something uh, it got me to a point because um she said that her favorite superhero was the flash and of course it's not on here so she named her car Barry Allen now my car is scarlet red and I named my car the flash so when I, I had it synced on my phone, but you know what? I don't go outside, so um, I showed it to her, and she said, no way. So the flash was listed as my car. Now, I love my doctor, and I love my counselor, and you know what? If I ever need anything, they tell me, no matter what time it is, call even if it's just to hear the voice of my counselor sometimes that calms me down doing his videos sometimes calms me down sometimes it doesn't because I'm trying to put these shows together and then I'm trying really hard to do it as best as I possibly can because I don't want to disappoint anybody but listen as much as I'm uncomfortable being on this camera all those celebrities that you saw the person you're looking at right now if you're one of those people out there who suffer from this depression anxiety whatever it may be you're not weak if you go look for help and there is help out there and if you have to look in different places over and over and over again until you find the right doctor and the right counselor to get you through you do it if it's not for your family then it's for you one of the hardest things to hear for somebody like myself who had been working for over two decades is that you may never work again not a regular job anyway I've been published 13 times I've written two books research papers poems I've been published doesn't mean jack shit I'm not rich I get disability from social security I struggle too 
my kids bought me my computer. They started their, you know, my son started his, my son and his girlfriend, his girlfriend lives with us. They bought my computer. They started a third year in college. My other son, I'm not even going to get into that. But I do have one last thing to say. Actually, two. Don't be afraid to go out and look for help because there is help out there. And second, Batman may be my f my fictional superhero. Other than the one I wrote about myself in my book. Actually, Batman still trumps my superhero. The guy that I created in my books, Jericho White. The, the Jericho White that you see on wrestling is the guy who's in my in my main books. In my stories. But they don't help me with my life. My counselor does. My doctor does. My son is my youngest son who still lives with me. Who's in college. He's 19. He's going to be 20. December 1st. He's just like me. We sound exactly the same on the phone. And if he was on the mic, you couldn't even tell it wasn't me. That boy has always been by my side. And you know, people say all the time, you know, I'm lucky to have a father like that. Or I'm lucky to have a mother like that. No. I'm lucky to have a son like that. Because that son is my real superhero. That's my son Austin Diaz. I named him after Stone Cold Steve Austin. That is Austin Robert Diaz. And he is my superhero.